Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So we are going to be talking about the atom in this lesson. And no, I'm not going to waste time going over unnecessary nonsense like, I don't know, different models, the Dalton model, the Bohr model, the Rutherford model. Look, if your teacher really wants you to know that, just try read over it a little bit, but it's not that important, okay? I'm going to give you, in this lesson, I'm going to give you what you need to know, and I'm going to make it super easy so you can just understand what are protons, electrons, neutrons, um, and we're going to look at all of those little things. Okay, so let's begin. So we're going to start with um, something called the nucleus, okay? So we're going to start with, I'm going to make a circle like that. Okay, and I'm going to call this, um, let me just make sure I don't get my labels in the way here. We're going to call this the nucleus, okay, and that's the center. Center, or if you want to spell it like that, I don't know, it's weird. Eh? Center of the atom. Okay, now inside this nucleus, there are going to be two types of things, okay. There's going to be, I'll draw them in red. Let's put a few of it. Let's put... I'll put four of them, okay? And so these red things, they're gonna be called protons, okay? And they are positive, so I'm gonna put a little plus inside there. They are positive. Then I'm gonna make some green things. Let's put some green things over here. And I'll just put maybe, let's put two. These ones are gonna be called um, neutrons. Now, they are not positive or negative. It would be great if I could just draw an arrow properly. Come on. <laughs> it would be great if I could get my arrow to work. There we go. Okay, so they're going to be called neutrons. Let's write this down. Neutrons. Now, they are not positive. They're not negative. They are neutral. What does neutral mean? Neutral means they have no charge. Okay, so let's put in brackets here. No charge. All right, so that's what we have in our nucleus. Now, on the outside are going to be these things called electrons, okay? And so, and so we get these, um, some, each, all t different atoms, um, sure, I battled to get that sentence out, um, have different amounts of these blue rings that I'm busy showing, okay? So some of them have one ring, some of them have two rings, some have three, some have four. We'll get into that in later lessons. Um, they're called energy levels. But for now, I'm just going to put three rings. Now, inside these rings, we get electrons, okay? So, for example, here we might have an electron there. And then another one over here. And we might get one there. Or no, let's put one, sorry, there and there. I'm actually just going to do two rings for now. Okay, so let's just do that. Now, these purple, um, or let, let's look at the blue part. The blue part, they are going to be energy levels. We're not going to get into too much of the details on that in this lesson, but it will definitely come up soon. So energy levels. And then the uh, purple part, those are electrons, okay? Electrons. I'm actually just going to add one more. And I think I'm actually just going to do... Um, let's do four. Yeah, let's do four electrons. That all makes sense. Okay, so these rings that I was showing you that were in blue, those are just going to be called energy levels. Now, we're not going to get into the details of those um, in this lesson, but it will come up in one of the future lessons. And then these purple dots, okay, um, they are going to be called electrons. E electrons. And they are actually negatively charged. So I'm going to put little minuses. Okay, and so that's the basic structure of an atom. Now we're going to talk a little bit um, about things like the mass and all of that. Okay, so to work out the mass of an atom, you take the protons, the number of protons, and you just plus it with the number of neutrons. Okay, you don't count the electrons. Why? Because... Electrons are extremely light, so we assume that they have no mass, okay? So um, electrons, we can assume that electrons have negligible, which means hardly anything, which means you can almost ignore it, have negligible 
mass. Okay, so to get the mass, you just say protons plus neutrons. So for this one over here, what would the mass be? Well, for this example, the mass would be, uh, let's just say here, for this example, because each atom's different, but for this example, the mass will be um, the number of protons, which is one, two, three, four, plus the number of neutrons, which are the green ones, which would be two. And so this, this atom would have a mass of six. Now, this six, uh, we're gonna call this, because it's the mass, we're gonna call it the mass number. Okay, then another thing we need to talk about is um, something called an atomic number. An atomic number. And I'm gonna show you a periodic table shortly where I'll show you where the mass numbers are, atomic numbers. But the atomic number is just the number of protons. Okay, it's just the number of protons. So for this atom, uh, for this example over here, um, it's mass number. So for this example, um, the atomic number would be um, the number of protons, which is four, okay? Now, sometimes we like to represent the atom by using, maybe your teacher spoke about the A, um, Z, and maybe they put an X, or normally we actually put the X on this side. Maybe your teacher showed you something like that. Now, this is just a nice way to represent an atom. Um, so this number at the top, is your mass number, and then this number at the bottom is your atomic number. And then the X, well that would be the type of atom on the periodic table, so maybe it would be carbon, then you would say C, or it could be um, aluminium, then you would put AL, or it could be nitrogen, then you would put N, for example. Something else I wanna talk about now is if you look at this entire um, atom, if you had to go add up all of the negatives and all of the positives, what would you get? Well, there are four negatives, so that would be minus four, and then there are four positives, so that would be positive four, and so the overall charge would be zero, okay? So the overall charge of this atom is zero. Now, what would happen if I had to take one of these electrons away? So let's say I take this electron away, okay? So then what would happen to the overall charge? So if we, if, so if one electron is removed, then what would your overall charge be? Well, now you would only have three negatives, but you would still have four positives. And so your overall charge would be a one, okay? So they are gonna do that quite a bit with you guys. Now, what if we, um, what if we decided to add one electron? So let's say we, add one more electron over here, and it's still negative. So let's just say here, if we add one electron, well then you're gonna have five negatives, and you're still gonna have four positives, and that would be negative one. So if you add in it, so, so, so what I want you to show, what I wanna show you is that um, we can add and take away electrons, and that will cause the molecule to become either charged or, um, or, or, or neutral, um, so for example, if it's if it becomes positively charged, like we saw, or let's say here, if it was neutral, when there were equal amounts of negatives and positives, then you just call it a neutral atom. If it's positively charged, then your teacher might want you to call it a cation, and if it is negatively charged, then your teacher may want you to call it an an. Iron. I just want to come back to, okay, so let's just take this electron away now. So let's just go back to having normal. Now, I just want to come back to this, um, where we had this notation. So the AZ, and then we had an X over here, for example. So let's just keep the, 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 the name of this atom called X. Now, the mass number, I forgot to fill this in. The mass number for this one we said was, um, it was six, right? And then the atomic number we said was, um, the atomic number we said that was four. And so that's what you would get over there for this atom, okay? Now, we're gonna, on the next slide, we're gonna do some examples where I'm gonna give you an atom and you need to tell me how many protons, electrons, neutrons, the mass number, atomic number, and you need to know how to write it like this, for example, okay? And then I'm also gonna show you um, what it looks like on the periodic table because on the periodic table, they switch these two around and learners get really confused. 
okay? So what they're showing here and what they're showing on a periodic table is not the same thing. They're not using the same structure, okay? Guys, to be honest, I think they made a bit of a mistake when they did that back in the days. Like they've caused a lot of confusion because this students think that this is what it's also like on the periodic table, but it's not. In the periodic table, they switch it around. They put the mass number at the bottom and they put the atomic number at the top. It's weird, but we'll get to that. I'll show you that in this lesson store. So here's our first example. So the first thing wants us to work out the number of protons. Now remember, protons are the positive. So there's one, two, three, four protons. Okay, the next one is the number of electrons. Those are the ones that are on the outside. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Next is the number of neutrons. Now those are the ones uh, that are not positive or negative. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I wonder if you can remember your mass number. Well, remember your mass number is all of the protons plus all of the neutrons. We don't count the electrons. So it's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, so that would be nine, because four plus five is nine. Now what is the atomic number? Remember the atomic number is uh, the same as the number of protons. So that's gonna be, uh, how many protons? We said four. Okay, now is this atom neutral, positive, or negative? What do I mean by that? Well, that's when you look at the overall charge. You look at all the positives, you look at all the negatives. So um, the charge is going to be all of the positives, which is the protons, which is four, and then all of the electrons, which is, there are six of them, but they're negatively charged. So you could say plus negative six, and that's gonna give us negative two. So this is a negatively charged atom, okay? And then represent using AZX notation. Okay, so AZX notation is um, whatever the name of this atom is. So let's say this is, um, let's give it a random name, let's call it Y, okay? So this is an atom Y. Now at the top over here, you show the mass number, and at the bottom you show the atomic number. So the mass number is going to be nine, and then the atomic number is going to be four. And so that's what we are supposed to be filling in over there, okay? Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a challenge. I'm gonna now give you the AZX notation, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions about that. So we're gonna say 27, we're gonna say 13, and then I'll just call it X because I'm not gonna give you names and stuff now. So the first thing I wanna know from you is what is the atomic number? So the atomic number, remember that that would be this one down here, which is gonna be 13. So then the mass number is the other one, so that would be 27. And then something else I wanna say is that this, let's say that this over here, this atom is a neutral, neutral. Okay, so that means that um, the number of positives and the number of negatives are the same. Okay, because that because um, if it's neutral, then your number of positives and negatives are the same. If it's more positive, then you have more positives, and if it's negative, you have more negatives. Okay, so what I want to ask you now here comes a challenging part. I want to I want you to try to figure out how many protons does this um, atom have, how many electrons and how many neutrons. So, if you remember from the previous, what we've just looked at, um, we know that the atomic number is the same as the proton number, okay? So the atomic number was 13, so that means there are 13 protons. Now, the mass number is the same as the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay? Now, we already know that the mass number is 27, we already know that the protons is 13, and so now we can work out the neutrons. And if you had to work that out, you should get 14 neutrons, because it would be 27 minus 13. Then the number of electrons, well, that you've got to think about this part, the positives and the negatives. Now, we said that the positives and the negatives are the same because it's neutral. So the positives are the protons, and we said that there were 13, so there must also be 
13 electrons. Let's try one more example, and then I'm gonna show you something on the periodic table, and then we're done. So here's that example, and then I'm gonna show you the periodic table, something interesting about the periodic table after this one, okay? So the atomic number, now remember the atomic number is always this number, it's always the smallest number, okay? Then the mass number is always the larger number, okay, remember that, the mass number is always large, larger um, than atomic number because atomic number is only the number of protons whereas the mass number is protons and neutrons okay now the number of protons is always going to be the same as your um, atomic number so that's going to be a 10 then the electro or let's do the neutrons first um, the neutrons you do it like this so we know that the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the protons, if we have, uh, so if we know the mass number is 24 and the protons is 10, then your neutrons would have to be 14, 24 minus 10. And so your neutrons would be 14. Your electrons, you would look at the overall charge, and here they say the overall charge is neutral. So that means we have equal amounts of protons and electrons because protons are positive and electrons are negative so that means we also have 10 electrons so here's a periodic table now you see what's weird is that i've been showing you this azx um kind of format where we put for example we put the bigger number at the top like 27 and then and then 13 over here and then we would say that that is the mass number and that is the atomic number. But on a periodic table, um, whoops, atomic number, I was busy saying periodic, atomic number. But on a periodic table, it's totally different. If you look on a periodic table, we've got, um, for example, here and here. So what you need to, we, we can see that the bigger number is at the bottom and the smaller number is at the top. Whereas here, the bigger number was always at the top. So they've switched it around on a periodic table, okay? And to be honest, the periodic table is more important. So all I want you to remember is that the mass number is always the bigger number. Because remember your mass number is protons plus neutrons, whereas your atomic number is just protons. Okay, so when you're showing it in this format, you're gonna have to just memorize this for yourself. You put the mass number at the top. But when you are on a periodic table, your mass number, which is the bigger number, is always at the bottom, and then your atomic number is always at the top. Okay, and another thing, your atomic number tells you where you are on the periodic table. This is atomic, that's position number one, position number two, position three, position four, position five, position six, position seven. So the atomic number, which is your protons, actually gives you the position on the periodic table. How cool is that? And so yeah, I've given you a lot of information in this lesson, so I want you to just take all of that, uh, make notes for yourself, make sure you understand everything, and yep, I'll see you in the next lesson.